What's up guys? In case you couldn't tell by the footage before this, I am back in Hong Kong to do a few things. One, I wanted to see what time the crossing closed and I was right. If I had left and tried to go back to China the same way that I came to Hong Kong, I wouldn't have made it because it was already 10 o'clock. That place closes at 10 o'clock. And number two, I want to make sure my bike is still here. I can't tell yet. And number three, I kind of wanted to bring my bike back. I found out I can take the bus back. So I should be able to take the bike back even though it's raining right now. And number four, I actually want to buy a new phone. So we're going to go farther into Hong Kong and go phone shop. All right, guys, I'm very close to the place where I locked my bike up. This is the moment of truth. Is it still here? Oh. Look at that! Oh my god! How can I be such a fortunate person? Seriously. Still has two wheels. Still has a seat. Awesome! Alright, now we're gonna go and do some phone shopping. There's this really cool area. It doesn't even open usually till noon, so we're probably gonna get there too early. And uh, you can find a lot of the newer phones and you can also find some secondhand phones which are really good deals um, i realized i can't buy phones in china anymore because they block all the google services and kind of need those things especially if you want to youtube so we're going to buy a phone here in hong kong because we still use google in hong kong all right we just got on the train here these two stations are in china and we are going almost to the end of the line. Watch these people setting everything up and then breaking it all down. Alright, mission accomplished. I have a phone, I have my bike, and I'm back in Shenzhen. It took forever. The last time I came back, and this time both, my passport wouldn't scan and so they held me at customs for a while. I've got about a half hour to walk back to the office and uh, get ready for class, which I should make it just in time. If not, I have to ride a little in the rain, which will suck. Um, but anyway, uh, oh, by the way, I got a Sony Z5 uh, Premium. It's got a 4K screen, blah, blah, blah. I only got it because it was cheap and it has a great camera. I really wish it had a bigger screen, but I should be okay with it. I'm trying to use my phone not so much, so I don't mess with my eyes and everything. But anyway. Thanks for coming along on this adventure. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please ask me questions. Oh, actually, you know what? Someone had a question. I'm going to answer that question before I sign off. All right, so I said I wanted to answer a question before I signed off this video. That was yesterday. <laughs> it's uh, once I get here at work, it's crazy busy. In fact, we just finished filming I Can Make, which is a video series that we do uh, one week I teach the kids how to make a handcraft the next week I teach them how to cook something um, and we just finished doing that
So I went over to Starbucks, got myself a green tea latte because I'm feeling a little sick and just a nice warm drink makes me feel a little better. And actually it's really funny, the guy at uh, Starbucks wrote down what they call it in Chinese and they taught me it's Mo Cha Latte, not green tea, not Yu Cha Latte, which I would think, but it's Mo Cha Latte. And so he wrote it down for me. I'm going to keep this in my wallet so the next time I go to a different Starbucks I can just flash them that if I can't remember how to say that. But I wanted to answer a question. Um, let me find it. All right, so I have a question from Sam White. And he says, hey man, you seem like a super interesting guy. That's really nice of you to say. I don't know if I'm, I don't even know if I'm interesting. I'm a, I'm a guy, I've lived an interesting life, but me, interesting, not sure. Uh, I'd love to hear your story. What brought you to China? So, okay, like I said in my response to you, the short answer is I've always wanted to come to China and uh, just seemed like a very interesting place. I've always been very interested in Eastern cultures and Eastern philosophy. And then uh, some very good friends of mine from San Francisco, they bought a training center here in Shenzhen that was to teach small children, like ages three to five, English. And when they bought the place, I think that was 2003, they recruited me to come. And I was still, I got divorced about 2001, and I don't know, after the divorce, I lost a lot of motivation and I kind of drifted doing a bunch of different things. I moved from Florida to uh, Louisiana to California, back to Atlanta, I think, and then to Colorado, and then to Washington, D.C. And about, that was a span of four or five years. And I alternated between teaching Thai boxing and doing IT work as a contractor for HP. In fact, I worked for HP uh, as a contractor in California, in Atlanta, and in the Washington, D.C. metro. And I had a really good time. People at HP are awesome. But it, I wasn't really passionate about the IT work I was doing. One of the jobs I did down in Atlanta, I was very passionate about that job. But I was offered a job at LA Boxing which may not sound like a lot, but I love my Thai boxing, I love MMA, um, and being part of the sport meant a lot to me. And at that time, I felt like LA Boxing was a big name. Maybe it would help me bring me to a, a new level in terms of Thai boxing and give me even more exposure. So I went ahead and took that job. I moved from Atlanta to Colorado, moved to Littleton just outside Denver, and it was awesome. Uh, I love the people out there. I love the job. Uh, I had problems with some of my coworkers. And eventually I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I ended up back at HP in Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, my friends here in China were like, hey, we still want you to come teach at our school. It's been open for a few years. We really want you to do this. We think you'll be great. And I finally decided, you know what? I'm not doing much right now. I'm not going anywhere. So why not do something different? This is the best time. I don't have I don't have anything to lose. You know, I'm not in a position where I have a lot of property or a lot of things going on that will fall apart if I go. So let's go. And I came to China, and it ended up being a pretty good experience mostly. Uh, I do still have issues with uh, cultural differences, and I'm still. Um, I'm not a city person, so living in the city is the hardest thing for me. Whenever we go out to the countryside, like where my wife used to live in Yangshuo, oh, I'm so happy. Uh, when we go to her parents' hometown, which is a really, really small village, not so much because it's really boring. I mean, it's nice, it's beautiful. It's just, there's not much to do. It takes a half hour to walk the town. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so... I came to China because I just wanted to experience something different and it ended up being good for me. I stayed for five years. I went back to the USA and opened a business. It didn't go very well and I was working at tech shop on the side of running my own business. And for those of you that don't know, tech shop is a maker space. They teach people how to make things. They have all the equipment there and you could really learn how to make almost anything at tech shop from design to at least prototype, you know, 
if not make something for production. Some people actually use their facilities to produce the things that they make and then just sell them. So I got into that maker movement and I loved it. I mean, that is something that I really enjoy. It allows me to be very creative and allows me just to do things. So my plan was, after the business went south, was to come back to China, work part-time, work on my own designs part-time, and hopefully come up with a new product or something that I could manufacture on my own and market and sell that and then eventually return to the US and do things again. Also, I wanted to pursue the woman that I was dating before. It's okay. <laughs> So anyway, I came back to China because I wanted to, you know, work on my own designs, create my own products, and try to get that into the market, and I wanted to get back with my girlfriend and pursue a relationship with her. We're now married, so that part was successful. So when I came back, the, the schools that I was working for needed me, and I'm not the kind of person that's easy for me to say no to people about <laughs> a lot of things. So, and they were like, oh, we need you to work here, we need you to work here. I, I tried to give myself as much free time as I could. Eventually, I lost all my free time, and I'm working full-time, and even more than full-time. So I haven't had time to work on the design stuff that I wanted to do. And for the last couple years, that's been on my nerves. It's been really annoying. And when I found this YouTube thing and decided, hey, I'm going to start vlogging, I'm going to start you know, making videos about my life and let my family back home know what I'm doing and just give myself something to do. And this has been the perfect outlet for me. So I, I really enjoy making these videos and, you know, it's keeping me sane here in China. So now I feel like it's a challenge. You know, I got to get up, I got to vlog and I want to vlog more. And I, I'd really love to be able to do this every day. I'm hoping to figure out a schedule that will allow me to do that. And uh, we're very close to 1K. Last time I checked, it was right about 800 subscribers, which is amazing because just a month ago, it was 30 subscribers. Uh, so I really think that I'm going to hit 1K within the next couple weeks. And someone suggested hats. And I like that idea because I want a new hat. <laughs> so I'm going to have some hats made. And uh, I want you guys to comment down below. Let me know what colors you want. So I'm thinking black hat, and then the color for the logo is what I'm thinking. Do I want to go blue silver or black and gold? I guess black and gold won't work on a black hat. Uh, anyway, so let me know. There's three colors to let me know. One, color of hat. Two, color of the main part of the logo. And then three is the color of the, the O in the logo. Chaos. Yeah, so let me know the three colors. And thanks for watching. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I cannot wait to get back on the bike and make some really cool videos for you guys and have some fun, meet some more people who are riding. Uh, I've got a couple of new spots I'm going to be checking out in the near future and hopefully getting together with some other riders. And All right, so I got to go. I got a lot of homework to grade. So much homework to grade. <laughs> it's going to take me hours to get all this stuff done. And thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Remember, you are awesome. See you.